beautiful natural sight and water, an ideal background for the World Rowing Championships. Since 1969, here in the vicinity of Antwerp, there has been a successful blending of park, aquatic sport facilities and nature reserve. took a lot of preparation to make sure that the 800 or so athletes from over 30 different countries from all five continents could be properly looked after. To ensure the smooth functioning of the championships and to make the event memorable for all concerned needed commitment and a great deal of energy on the part of many. training on the days preceding the race, a tense lull before the climax of the season. In Belgium, since time immemorial, waterways have been lifelines for trade, industry and culture. But of course, water has also been the scene of many sorts of contests and games. Artists have handed these activities down to posterity. The River Schelde has been of particular importance for the economic and cultural development of Flanders. On the banks of the river, the city of Antwerp developed into a center of shipping already in the 13th century. Today, it is the world's third biggest port. But Antwerp is also a center of the highly developed Flemish culture. Artists like Rubens and Van Dyck worked here. The city continues to be shaped by its rich heritage of art history. So the world's rowing elite has assembled in a place steeped in tradition for the opening ceremony of the World Championships held in the Grotenmarkt, surrounded by the town hall and the beautiful guild halls. Et je déclare ouvert les championnats du monde à l'avenir 1985. up to the start of the preliminary heats. All men and women in a total of 250 boats are competing in 20 categories for the titles. For the first time in the history of the International Rowing Federation, FISA, there will be official world championship titles in lightweight categories.
the start, there's a very special atmosphere of intense excitement. Oblivious of their surroundings, the athletes concentrate on the strenuous race ahead. The hubbub at the finish is only a far-off prospect. There's only the sound of oars in the water. Everyone has his or her own special ritual just before the start. combination of applied strength and elegance, power and rhythm, is one of the most fascinating pictures in the world of sport. Almost no other sport makes such tough physical and mental demands as rowing. A rowing stroke calls on nearly every muscle. During the six to eight minutes of a race, the athlete's performance is put to the test in every respect.
The race is over. The totally exhausted crew recover slowly and accept the congratulations for their performance, as here the Belgium 8 on its hotly contested qualification for the semi-finals. Finishing touches are given to the boat, one of the most beautifully shaped, elegant pieces of equipment in preparation for the next race. And then there's time to relax. Finish, the mood is that of a garden party. Competitors mix with officials and spectators, many of them former oars men and women. World championships are always the occasion for a big get-together of the rowing confraternity. One compares notes, swaps experiences with several generations of rowers. Belgium has a long rowing tradition. The beginnings of the sport here go back to about 1860. The Belgian Rowing Federation was founded about 100 years ago. In 1892, the Federation was one of the four founder members of FISA. Around the turn of the century, the Belgians dominated European rowing. In those days, they won no less than 42 European titles. But Belgium also has a tradition of hosting championships. Four times it organized the European Championships and in 1920, here in the picture, the Olympic regatta. The day of the finals. The boats are still lying at their moorings. Preparations are made. The first title of the championships, the women's lightweight single skulls, is being contested. While the surprising Australian Adair Ferguson outspurts the Romanian Maria Makovicuk in the struggle for the gold medal. The Belgian Rita de Frau and the American Anne Martin fight it out grimly for the bronze. Rita de Frau is beaten at the finish by 13 hundredths. The races follow in quick succession, all providing superb rowing. Belgium, the host country, 
gets no fewer than four boats into the finals. Three times the spectators watch the bronze medal slip just out of their country's reach. The first part of the finals is brought to a close with the victory in the eights of the Soviet Oars women over the German Democratic Republic and Romania. personalities of the championships. President of the organizing committee, Bob Bartons, Minister Poma, FISA President, Thomas Keller, and Director General of Sports, Armand Lams. Journalists from all over the world work at their reports, and some of the winners have first to get used to their medals. The countdown begins for the single skulls, one of the highlights of the finals. In rowing, which is in fact a team sport, scholars are a special type of athlete, highly individualized, often loners. A successful scholar must have exceptionally strong willpower. For over 10 years, this category has been dominated by Peter Michael Kolbe from the Federal Republic of Germany, three times world champion, and the Finn Perti Kalpinen, once world champion and three times Olympic champion. Their duels have passed into rowing history. Among the favorites, there is also Uwe Mundt from the German Democratic Republic and Vasily Yakusha, the Soviet Union. After the first hundred meters, Kalber begins to pull away from Munt and Yakusha. Halfway through the race, and Karpinen is lying a little behind, level with the American Sadaf. Then Sadaf starts to attack. Kalbe puts up a desperate resistance, but he has to let Sadaf pass. Already, it looks as though the American will be the surprise winner. But then Karpinen starts on an unbelievable final spurt.
gold for Karpinen, silver for Sadaf, bronze for Kolbe. The eights is traditionally the most spectacular race of the finals. This race was another surprising boat. With tremendous fighting spirit, the Italian crew makes a place among the first three. The final result is gold for the Soviet Union, silver for Italy, and bronze for the USA. And so the 1985 World Championships at Hasewinkel, with all their enthralling moments, have passed into the great and glorious history of rowing.